Coming up in about a week, right across Canada, will be the release of an exciting new movie called Courageous. It really is a gripper. I have seen it, and it was absolutely a moving experience for me personally. And I know you're going to love it too. And we're going to be meeting here in just a moment the, uh, the brilliant geniuses, <laughs> the thoughtful men, the uh, committed men behind it. But before we do, let's take a look at it. Office. On the streets, they put their lives on the line. I know you see the worst side of people out there, but when you clock out, go home and love your family. But at home, they struggle to connect. Can I talk to you? Can I suggest that you spend a little more time with him? Do you really feel like it messed up your childhood not having a dad? More than you know. Is a fireproof. Resolution? Yeah. You've been a good enough father. I don't want to be a good enough father. Can I say this too? You feel like a rich man. I know that. I want the very best for you. I promise to take care of you. I believe every father should step up. So where are you, men of courage? at all. This film is not yet rated in theaters September 30th. So it's a Sony release right across Canada and it's going to be a hit. There's no question about it. Um, these are the men, the Kendrick brothers. It's first time I've uh, sat down to interview two brothers together. This is oh, really, okay. yeah, this is really exciting. Stephen and Alex. Uh, Alex, you are uh, uh, a key player. I, I would say the star of the movie in the sense that uh, I think you have most on-air presence. Do you not in the movie? Uh, perhaps. You know, it does follow five different guys as yeah. fathers and their families. But yeah, you but know. The, 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 uh, the story really revolves around something that happens to your family. That's correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, the, the way the brothers come together, I should say, well, they're brothers, they're policemen. Yeah. The way they come together is, is really very inspiring. But the, uh, the fact is that this movie is very unique for a number of reasons, Stephen. One of them being that it's produced by a church. That's exactly right. And, and this isn't the first time. Tell us a little bit about the history of filmmaking in your church, Sherwood Baptist Church, is it? That's right, in Albany, Georgia. In Albany, Georgia. Um, Alex and I are on staff for different reasons. Uh, he came in 99 to be the media guy, and I came to be the pastor's preaching assistant. Right. But Alex had a dream back when he was watching Raiders of the Lost Ark as a 12-year-old <laughs> uh, <laughs> to one day grow up and make movies, but to do them for the Lord. And so um, we heard a national poll in 2002 that people in our culture are letting movies influence them more than they are the church. Mm -hmm. And that grieved us because we have the best messages in the world. Yeah. And so we decided, well, why don't we just make a movie for our local community? And so with uh, $20,000 and no training and no experience, uh, we made a little movie called Flywheel. And it was just as an outreach to our community. And uh, it took off, went across the nation. Blockbuster Video picked it up. It's been in Walmart and it's been in Canada. Mm. And uh, we were blown away at how God was using this little storyline dedicated to him to lead people into a stronger relationship with him. And the next movie? Facing the Giants. Facing the Giants. I mean, I, I, I haven't seen it, okay. but, but I, I remember hearing about it and people asking me just out there, you know, in my neighborhood, have you seen Facing the Giants? I said no, and I didn't realize then it had come from, from you and your church. Yes. That movie was the big budget of 85000 to to $100,000 uh, for us to produce that. But again, uh, it, it's a lot of church members working together uh, saying, Lord, would you enable us to do something beyond our own ability? You know, we were, we were basing it upon a few promises from scripture. God can supply all of our needs and we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And so we moved forward laying tracks in front of a moving train saying, God, would you help us to make a movie that will reach culture? And so Facing the Giants uh, took off across America. Uh, it was number 12 across the nation in theaters. Sony picked it up. It was, they released it in 441 theaters and that blew our minds because again, it was it was Sunday school teachers being actors. You know, it was the mm. usher at the door uh, playing in a scene, and these people had n never acted before. Now, Alex, uh, Fireproof yep. was also a big movie. You were <laughs> in that movie. Were, were you in the Giants movie as well? I was the coach in uh, Facing the Giants, and I was at, at the very end of Fireproof. And, and, and Fireproof uh, was the best of, of, of your three efforts at that point in time in terms of response, right? It was. You know, it came out in the most theaters, and uh, as Sony built confidence in what we were doing, and they questioned why it was working. 
And of course, we know how it was working. We right. bathe these things in prayer and say, God, would you do something above and beyond what we could ever ask or imagine? And he has. He's, you know, we, we try not to hold anything back from him. It's not about uh, making anybody a star. It's not about furthering a, a, a career. It's about reaching people with a message that, that can change their life. And so, uh, yeah, Fireproof uh, released in a little over 800 theaters in 2008 and uh, became the number one independent movie of 2008 and um, uh, sold millions of DVDs. And, and we hear daily from people who are impacted by those, those now, movies. Now, it was out of Fireproof that you uh, came up with the idea of the Love Dare, right? Yes. Uh, actually, Alex and I were praying about the storyline for the movie. He was jogging around the block one day and he called me and said, I think God just gave me the idea for the next movie. He runs over to my house and I'm standing on the driveway and Alex says this couple's heading for divorce and uh, the father gives him this book called The Love Dare. You know, it was originally a point plot in the movie. And, uh, and then he begins to learn what unconditional love is. And, and, uh, and then as a result of it, you know, it, it helps him to reconcile this marriage. And, and I said, Alex, the cross could be right in the middle of that movie because the cross is the greatest expression of love. And as he's learning about love, it will lead him to the cross. And so that day we both believed that God was leading us to make that movie and to write the book, The Love Dare. Yeah. And uh, we, we didn't know what God had in store for that book either. Um, yeah. It's sold five million copies around the world. It's in uh, 23 languages. Wasn't uh, it wasn't on the New York Times bestseller list? It still is. Still, still is. is. Yeah. Really? Still 100, is. 126 weeks later. Yeah. I mean, how, do, how, how does that feel for you guys? I mean, well, you're pastors. Humbling. <laughs> I, but, I, but I tell you what we've learned. Um, we, we decided if there's one thing we would seek after, what would we want? If we could have anything we wanted, and we boiled it down to we would want the favor of God. Right. And so if we want the favor of God, why would we chase anything more than that? Mm. And so we, we go through a whole season of prayer, a season, not just a day or two, but a season of prayer saying, Lord, we want you to do whatever you want to do. We're, we are at your disposal. Don't do it for our glory. Do it for your glory. Mm. And we will reflect that. We will tell people you did this. And so mm. with every movie, with every book, any success that has come out of it, we know God has done that. That's yeah, exactly right. Now, so. when you talk season of prayer, we got a lot of secular viewers that have no idea what you're talking about. Sure. Winter time, summertime, springtime? Sure, that, that's what, a great what, question. What are you talking about season of prayer? What we do, you know, more than a religion, we don't, we don't feel like we're religious people. We, we feel like we have a relationship with God. He, he wants to hear from us. We talk to Him. We, you know, we read His Word, the Bible, and we say, Lord, what would you have us do? Would you open the doors you want us to walk through? Would you close the doors you don't want us to walk through? And as we read the Bible and we, say, and we, we learn about the character of God, and, and so we pray to Him, we talk to Him daily, and we say, God, would you use us in a way that pleases you? And, and reveal to us that the things you want us to do as far as books, movies, things like that. And little by little, as we chase him, mm -hmm. he begins doing that. And it becomes so obvious after this season, it could be six months, it could be a year, mm -hmm. that we spend just praying and saying, God, what would you want for me to do? And, and then getting rid of, rid of anything that would stand in the way. You know, as sure. we read scripture, if, if it's obvious that some things God is not pleased with, then we remove those things out of our life. And when we do that and he is pleased, he does amazing things. Mm. Yes, he does. Like why you and not somebody else? I mean, there's all kinds of uh, creative Christians out there, people who have great gifts, people who are writing screenplays, people who are ready to grind it out when it comes to the work involved in making a movie, and they just hit a wall. It seems like everything just opens up for you. Uh, no. why, why you?